Hello again. This is Chris Lee, Blake Lovell, and Max Barr of Southeastern 14 here to give you predictions for four SEC basketball games on Tuesday night. Missouri travels to Kentucky, South Carolina goes to Alabama, Texas A&M visits Auburn, and LSU will host Vanderbilt. We will do these in order of tip-off. First, a reminder, our predictions are brought to you by Bet Online with NFL playoffs right around the corner and the NBA season in full swing. Bet Online has you covered with all the up-to-the-second odds, news, and scores with additional odds, lines, trends, and info on both desktop and mobile. You can access the world's best wagering information anytime. And there today to get in on the action, see the updated odds. Remember to use promo code BELIEVE to get your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. That is B-L-E-A-V, Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, we'll start with the 6 o'clock Central tip-offs. First, we will go Missouri's trip to Kentucky. Kentucky coming off an impressive road performance and a win at Florida. On Saturday, Missouri got beat at home by Georgia. And frankly, Blake just has not looked like the same team. We're very high on Kentucky. Cats at home. This would seem to be a difficult ask uh, to think that Missouri can win in Lexington on Tuesday, Blake. I would think so. Um, I, I don't know what the spread winds up being, but boy, I I worry about this one for Missouri because I just think this is a bad matchup. Um, as good as Kentucky has been offensively, especially at home, um, you know, again, I know they didn't shoot as well against Florida, but oof, I just, yeah, I just don't think this sets up well from a matchup standpoint for Missouri. Like I just, I look at all the stats, I look at all the numbers and what have we said? I mean, really, if you look at the strength of Missouri on the defensive side, it's still being able to force turnovers, but Kentucky doesn't turn the ball over. <laughs> so it's just like, I don't know if Missouri can find enough easy offense. Although, as we said, Kentucky has been a little inconsistent on the defensive side, but my, the bigger thing to me is just I just don't think Missouri can keep up offensively. Um, they've just had too many issues there. And as we said, I think there's a lot of pressure going into Rupp. And you already don't have a lot of confidence right now. You're playing a Kentucky team that is as confident as ever, especially after that comeback win at Florida. And, I, yeah, I just look at this matchup. Size, defense, offense, like there's just too many things in Kentucky's favor to make me think that Missouri's kind of got the formula to, to to get a win here. When I was researching this game, Blake, I was like, geez, every single stat, every single piece I look at is pointing me to Kentucky, which then in turn makes me believe like, oh, gosh, like this is this is almost this. is Yeah, this is too. Uh, and and I just I still can't get there. I, I, I really think, like you said, this is just a brutal matchup for Missouri. I looked at the numbers with Caleb Grill and without Caleb Grill. Um, their three-point offense has dropped over 2%, and their three-point defense has gotten 4% worse. So, you know, Grill comes over from a, an Otzelberger defense at, at, at Iowa State, really defends the perimeter well, and you lose that. But then also, uh, their, their freshman that has, has kind of come on strong, Anthony Robinson, he was without he was not with the team at all last week. He had a he has some family issues going on right now that are are pretty serious that you know required him to miss like almost a full week of practice. He just got back with the team on Saturday. That's why he didn't really play much. And he's one of the, the better perimeter defenders on the team. So you just you got a lot going on with Missouri that that is, you know, worrisome. And then in in turn, you have a Kentucky team that's coming off of a win but is not going to be overconfident because you saw how how Cal was after the game. He wasn't very happy. He was he straight out comes out and says, "Rob Dillingham, you played terrible. We got lucky." Uh, I guarantee these practices for Kentucky are are not too, you know, laid back. Um and in one one last piece is I really think the individual matchup that Noah Carter can usually take advantage of at the 4 you got one of the most athletic forwards in the country in Trey Mitchell at the four now that can switch defensively on the perimeter and and isn't really going to get beat too much. So everything is pointing to Kentucky, which makes me a little bit scared, but I just, I think this is a, is a brutal matchup. If you want to get an idea of what the line will be, we average 
BPI Bart Torvik, Ken Pomeroy. That's got this as about a 14 point spread as of Monday morning with Kentucky with an 89% chance to win. Look, the only, I guess, defense I could give to taking Missouri is just the reminder one, that Blake said Kentucky is not quite defensively what it would like to be. And the True. reminder that their coach is telling them you guys got a little lucky. The other thing is that with a young team, uh, sometimes stuff pops up. UNC Asheville. Exhibit A, that's the last game Kentucky lost. Uh, I think number 128 in Ken Palm, Kentucky. Wilmington. No Wilmington, excuse me. Okay. Yeah. Whoever it was, they beat Kentucky in, in a yeah. game Kentucky shouldn't have lost. So that, that does tend to happen time to time, and we did see some pretty crazy stuff in, in the SEC at times last weekend. But, guys, I think we're, we're all going Kentucky here without much hesitation. Yikes. Yep. Yikes for Kentucky fans. Yeah, we I did mean, this, this to Auburn the other day. Play. This is going to go down to the last possession. Just wait. Or rather to Arkansas. That, that was the, well, we, that we was didn't the just Southeast miss that one. Jinx. Oh, boy. Hold on a second. We didn't just miss that one. We missed about we missed four that one by. We all yeah. picked on. So, yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's not over. Couldn't have missed here. that one any worse. Oh, man. Not, not our best weekend. <laughs> um, but I tell you, I had a good weekend last weekend with South Carolina. By the way, Kentucky game on ESPN, same time SEC Network, 6 Central. South Carolina visits Alabama, which has been just a juggernaut at home other than the Clemson game. Uh, Alabama won at Vanderbilt by three Saturday. South Carolina beat Mississippi State in the game that was pretty much a pick -em. This one, Alabama, will be about a 14-point favorite in Tuscaloosa with about an 88% chance to win between those three computers. All right, we'll 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 leave it to our resident Alabama <clears throat> man, Blake Lovell, to uh, – boy, he's, he's got it queued up, Max. I can just tell. <clears throat> Here we go. 105, 102, 102, 98. Um, okay, 89. That's a, that's a rough game there for the Crimson Tide, scoring 89. Eastern Kentucky, they scored 111. Uh, Semi-home game against Liberty, they scored 101. And then they did have the 77-point game to Clemson. So, if you're going to say a couple of things here. For one, this game's not at Memorial Gym, so that favors Alabama, in my opinion. Um, and, and again, those, those numbers I reeled off are Alabama's scoring output at home this season. But if you want to go the other direction and say that 77 was against Clemson, Clemson also in the state of South Carolina. So, if you tie all that together, this could be a real issue for the Alabama Crimson Tide playing another team from the state of South Carolina. Um, and you know, maybe that 80 point dome is over them to where they cannot hit 80 points uh, in this game. But in all seriousness, I know Chris can't stand this Alabama Crimson Tide basketball team, but <laughs> I think this is a, a great opportunity here for them at home against South Carolina because. I just, it's the same thing, right? It's just, uh, like I said, I, I think you're going to see Alabama come out and what we saw in that first 10 minutes against Vanderbilt, and we can make all the you know Memorial Gym jokes we want. But to me, that's more of the Alabama you're going to see the rest of the way, like the putting up 30 minutes and or 30 points in 10 minutes. Like that's just, I think that's what they can do. Now, the difference, of course, South Carolina has gotten a lot better on both sides. We've talked about that. Um, you know, I think... I don't think South Carolina, you know, backs down from the challenge here because I think, again, we've seen this team time and time again this year with the older guys, which we discussed in the power rankings. Um, they're going to come in and feel like they have a really good chance to win this game. And you want to talk about making a statement for Lamont Paris and company, like this would be that signature win you need. I know you just got one against Mississippi State, but going on the road and beating in Alabama um, and being able to play well enough defensively to slow this Alabama team down, would be as significant as it gets for South Carolina. Um, but I just tend to think that, look, Alabama's only played one home game in the past month. I don't know if anyone realizes that. Like, they've played at home against Eastern Kentucky on December 23rd. Their last home game before that was, was December 4th against Arkansas State. They played the Purdue Creighton Arizona stretch. They played Liberty. Um, not at home. Where was that at? Um, Huntsville, Birmingham, one of those places. Uh, so, a homecoming for Alabama here. I just I feel like matchup wise, the offense will be too much. Um, but it is worth noting that South Carolina, Max. I'm sure may, maybe you can kind of look at this a little bit. You know, <laughs> South Carolina is not bad in terms of their three point defense. Like it's been pretty good. So 
something to keep in mind here. I find it crazy how Blake always knows exactly what my research is. Oh, I know you're going that direction. Um, well, since you touched on on the three pointers, I I think this matchup is, is very interesting because I like I like stuff on both sides. Uh, when you look at Alabama, what have we been talking about this whole time? Is their their lack of defense, particularly in the interior. In South Carolina, they rank 49th in adjusted offensive efficiency, but 328th in pace. So that half-court offense, they they will work the shot clock, and they will get a good shot more often than not. And now you can say, well, South Carolina hasn't played an away game since December 9th. <laughs> Very uh, different than Alabama's past month. But in those away games they've played they've played four top 100 teams has South Carolina three of them were on the road it was it, Virginia Tech Grand Canyon Clemson and and Mississippi State um or not Mississippi State East Carolina um in those four games against top 100 teams on the road they're averaging nine three pointers per game shooting 39 percent so the shooting has traveled it's not like they have this big splits home shooting they shoot the ball well they go on the road and don't shoot that, that half-court offense has been efficient in almost every game they've played. But Alabama plays a polar opposite than Mississippi State. I don't think in a back-to-back you can get a more opposite team. You, you have Mississippi State who maybe maybe Texas A&M, but even then Wade Taylor, and you can draw some similarities between him and some of the Alabama guards. This is a quick turnaround, Saturday to Tuesday, and you get a completely different team. Like night and day different and if you look at South Carolina's defense they don't force a lot of turnovers and if there's one thing Alabama is going to make sure that they work on this week it's taking care of the ball I guarantee you Mark Sears ain't turning it over six times again so I see a little bit of a path for both teams here but like Blake said I just think it's it's going to be too much a little bit too overwhelming for South Carolina in this one okay I have dogged Alabama for not playing well at Vanderbilt, which is one of the worst teams in the SEC over the past decade coming in. Vanderbilt is getting better. We'll, we'll account for that. We'll get to the Commodores in a minute. But all kidding aside, I do think Blake was right. I think that was just one of those nights Alabama got a big early. And, and you know what? We talk about South Carolina and being able to grind you to a slower tempo defensively. Good luck doing that to Alabama. Those guys right. whip the ball around the perimeter. They get wide, freaking open looks. This one's in Tuscaloosa. I think South Carolina with Michi Johnson and Mac and some of those experienced players. Cooper, could Carolina go down there and hang with them for a while? Yes. Could Carolina pull an upset? Yeah, I, I could see it. I don't think it's likely. I just think Alabama with that offense, all that firepower at home is going to win. And I don't think I'll get disagreement out of either of you two. Can we can we clip the, the Blake was right part? Can we put that out on? Oh, you're going to, time. regardless of whether we do it or not, I'm sure. Well, so. well, yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. I would never do that to you. No. Um, I, I think this will be a good game. I will say that. I, I'd be surprised if South Carolina comes out and, you know, Alabama wins this thing going away. I just I, I just feel like South Carolina's got a toughness to them where that's not going to happen with this group. So maybe I'm even going to be a little different than you guys. I think this will be closer than maybe even the computers think. I just – yeah, I think South Carolina's just kind of like I said, they're gamers, man. So I think they'll step up and play well here, but it's just slowing down Alabama is going to be the the biggest challenge. Yeah, I think I, I really think that uh, Mark Sears, you know, takes control of this game and and takes care of the ball. I'm really interested to see the box score after this one and see the turnover numbers because I'm predicting with pretty good confidence that Alabama is going to make it an emphasis to take take care of the ball, and that's just gonna that's just gonna in turn you know, result in more and more good looks for Alabama. They scored 77 at Vandy with all those turnovers. So you're barring a horrible shooting performance. You're looking at a clear 80, 85 plus offensive performance for Alabama. Give me the tide. Yeah. I, I don't think it'll be the, the 14 points or so. The computers have it as of Monday morning, but it, I do think Alabama wins this one. Yeah. Okay. Eight o'clock ESPN two, a matchup between two teams that, Frankly, I don't think Auburn could have possibly played any better. Well, I mean, the first half, they weren't dominating. The second half was another story. 
in a historic win at, at Arkansas. I don't think Arkansas has ever been beaten as badly in Fayetteville as Auburn beat them. If I, if the information I got from the television on Saturday night was correct. Uh, and then there's Texas A&M, which I, I never fathomed. A&M would not even be within a couple of possessions of winning a home game with LSU Saturday, but A&M could not throw it in the ocean. It was just awful. Henry Coleman was not a factor. Buzz Williams, I think, had been warning his team coming in. Certainly, if that warning was not heard prior to LSU loss, I think it'll be heard now. But, boys, they play in this one in Neville Arena in Auburn where not a lot of teams – Come out alive with much to brag about. Oh, that's Hang right. You on. got a little fun because this has been a Uh-oh. weird series. Hang by, on by the a way, second. Auburn about you... a 10 point favorite according to computers with an 83% chance to win. But, Blake. But you say not a lot of teams go in there and have success. Well, there's one team that does, and it seems to be Texas AM. Um, because if you look at the, again, we're going recent history here. AM. One, let's see. So they won 79 63, the most recent meeting. The one before that, Auburn won in 2022, 75 58. That has been the outlier because you keep going. 2020, AM won by three. 2018, AM won by one. 2016, AM won by 18. Um, 2015, AM won by 10. You know, then you're going back into the different era, well, right? Auburn but still, good. yeah. Well, but still, but it's like 2013, AM won. 2006, AM won. Um, so like even during the Bruce Pearl era, if we just stop it at that, AM has probably had as much success as anybody in Auburn Arena or Neville Arena now. I mean, so that would be the only thing I would bring up here. Um, is that for whatever reason, Texas AM has fared very well um in, in the series history here, recent series history. Now, you know, Auburn's got some I mean, I say that, I never mind. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, like AM has won one, two, what? Eight of the last ten in this series, so so like even kind of the games in College Station, Auburn won there in 2018, 19. They won by 19, but I mean, again, other than the home game in 2022, that's about it. Like A and M has had a lot of success against Auburn, so this is the one game that I would say, if you're going to, and Auburn fans, we're not doubting you. Like let's just let's calm down and move you up to number two in the power rankings this week. But all I'm doing is bringing up the stat that if you're looking for games that may be a little bit closer than you think there is the history, just like I pointed out with like the Alabama Vanderbilt game that tells you that for whatever reason, A&M has had some success there. And the problem is though, I just don't know if this is the team that's going to be able to do it because we saw what they look like against LSU. We talked about the offensive numbers and we've said time and time again, Auburn is Auburn may be the most complete team in the sec. We talked about all the numbers, the statistics, everything, Deepest team, there's a good argument for that. And it's just AM cannot shoot the ball. So if you're going to come in, you're not going to be able to shoot the ball. Um, then I think it's how do you find success against this Auburn team that defensively has been so good, really, since game one? If you go beyond game one, Auburn defensively has just been really, really good. And that's my biggest question here, Max, is AM's got a you know, obviously got an SEC player of the year guy and, and Wade Taylor and Radford's back and all that, but I just don't know that A&M has enough firepower right now on, on either side. Like offensively, some of their numbers look pretty good, the offensive rebounding numbers and all that, but defensively, I just think that, I don't know. I, I just, I don't, I don't love the matchup for this A&M team, despite all the recent success that that program's had on the road against Auburn. Check, check these numbers out, out Blake. And, and, over the past, let's see, after the Appalachian State game, so you got one, two, seven games. They've played Indiana on a neutral court. I know Indiana is not that decent, but they do have uh, a lot of front court presence. USC at home, Penn at home, Arkansas away. Auburn is averaging 91 points per game since that Appalachian State loss. 91. Well, we, we keep talking about Alabama's offense we got to start giving some credit to this Auburn offense. They are putting up crazy numbers, um, and that's not very good uh, for a Texas A&M team that Wade Taylor just said this after the game. He goes, when we go into an offensive drought, we go into a defensive drought as well, and and that's not good for, <laughs> when you're going to Neville Arena because you're, this, this Auburn defense 
is it's a full 40 minutes of defense. I think it gets better when they go to the bench and they bring in Dylan Cardwell and, and, and Chaney Johnson and, and Baker Mazzara and these these guys all six seven or taller. There's no let up. Um, and and for a team that Blake said might be taking the crown as the Mississippi State of last year or the nation's worst shooting team, uh, A&M's not doing themselves any favors, mm -hmm. uh, especially <clears throat> Manny Obasik. He hasn't made a three since December 10th. Jace Carter's only had one game over with one more with over a three and, and Hefner and, and Taylor or Hefner, Taylor and Radford all just coming off bad shooting nights. So. I mean, it's not looking good on, on paper, but I will say this. If there's anyone that can, you know, just take over a game, we saw him do it against Houston. And if there's there's no better defense right now than Houston, it's Wade Taylor and, and what he can do individually. So I'm really excited for this game because everything is pointing towards Auburn just running away with it. But you got to remember who's on Texas A&M in that backcourt. So I'm very excited. Well, and guys, one little point on the other side, too. Um, I, I just watched a &M the other night. I didn't even know what I was watching. I mean, Radford and just wasn't Tyrese he looks Radford. He looks Wade, Wade Taylor's not been efficient. I, I don't know if it just maybe it's a matter of them getting back and playing together. Henry Coleman was just absolutely invisible the other night. He's been a debatably a top five player in the league. I mean, there was a there's a sense of water rising to its its normal level that, that feels sort of inevitable with, with Texas A&M. But on the other hand, you're, you're playing a, an Auburn team that's as hot as anybody in the country in its building. So that, that, that's not the spot you want to be in if you're A&M. Right. No, A&M's 15-79 from three in their last three games. So that's brutal. I mean, <laughs> last five games, you don't take it that far. They shot 18% from three against Memphis, 33% against Houston, 26% against Houston Christian, 12 or 13% against Prairie View A&M, 18% against LSU. So I, I'd say very clear game plan for you. talking about a team that has the clearest game plan possible, Auburn yeah. against Texas A&M. It is make them shoot threes. Don't let them get the rebound. You do that, you win the game easily. Very simple. So I'm picking right. Auburn in this one, by the way. I just I think it could be closer just because of the recent trends. So yeah. Yep, yeah, I'm, I'm going. I'm, oh, you go, Chris. Go ahead, Chris. Well, I was because I'm right there with you. I, I just think AM's got to play better. It's just that it man, that's a tough ask in, in Neville right now with the way Auburn's playing. Yeah, I mean, if if I'd say maybe at uh, in Knoxville or, or in Lexington, it could be the only tougher environments to try to have a get right game right now. But with how Auburn's playing, they might they might take it for for toughest right now. Um, it's just it's a it's a bad spot at a bad time here for for A and M, who's really not shooting the ball well. Give give me Auburn at home. If it was at Texas A and M, might be a little bit interesting. Um, but in Neville, I just give me Auburn here. All right. Also at eight Central. On the SEC Network, Vanderbilt travels to LSU. Two teams have been playing, playing much better lately. Vanderbilt doesn't have a lot to show for it other than a two-point loss to Memphis and a three-point loss to Alabama, but it's been a different team. Speaking of different teams, boy, LSU looked great at A&M. Uh, the, the experience backcourt of, of Cook and, and Jordan Wright were great. Uh, they, they've got veteran presence in the paint with Will Baker. Um I didn't expect LSU to look as good as it did the other night. And now the Tigers, Blake, at home, they're about 11.5-point favorites over Vanderbilt according to the computer. I don't know that the spread will be that big because Vandy's played better lately, but uh, computers have LSU is about an 87% probability to win this one in the, the Jordan Wright revenge tour, Blake. Has Vanderbilt played better lately? <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. That was a we're that having was a some fun. shots. We're having some fun with these basketball videos. <laughs> I, I think we may have continued the thread from the power rankings, but we're we recording these all at the same time. So, um, Vanderbilt has played better lately, no matter what anyone tells you. Um, they lost at Memphis by two, they lost to Alabama at home by three in Memorial Gym. We won't go through those stats again, but, um, yeah, I, I tend to think this is going to be a close game because we have, like we said, it's for Vanderbilt, the, the thing is just 
if you just get other guys stepping up, like they're going to keep, they're, they're going to have their chances in some of these games. And I, I feel like this is not the worst matchup in the world for them. I mean, here's the thing, right? With Vanderbilt, statistically, you're going to look at a lot of these things and say, well, boy, they're bad. And like, but, but I do think you have to separate a little bit of what you saw, you know, from the past three games in relation to everything else that we had seen to that point. And so I think you have to kind of keep that in perspective when you're just looking at the stats with this game. So yes, there are a lot of areas that LSU can exploit, at least looking at it on paper. But I think the, the biggest difference has been what you said, Chris, when we, I don't know, it was power rings or whatever. It's just LSU defensively has been so much better. And mm-hmm. I think that's going to be the biggest perhaps challenge here for Vanderbilt is just, you know, you are playing a team that has gotten better on that side. And there is, you know, sometimes you say it doesn't mean anything like, but, Sure, there's a little added motivation here with with Jordan Wright and and all those things, and um, so I think yeah, it, it seems to set up pretty nicely for LSU. I mean, again, just looking at it statistically, like I don't, I don't know that there's a lot of areas that just kind of, you know, I mean, Vanderbilt does a, I, yeah, like I just look at this and I'm like, yeah, if you just look at the stats, like it's hard not to pick LSU here and feel pretty good about it, um, but I do think it's. I'm curious just because of how much better Vanderbilt has seemingly played over the past three games. But now with Jalen Cook, LSU is a different team too. And so, um, you know, their offensive numbers are probably also a little misleading just based on yeah. how much better they've been with with him in the mix. So, Yeah, when you when you just look at the numbers, it's, it's hard to really get a read on this game because both teams have not played at full strength for like more than half their games, it feels like. Um, you have to understand, like we've been saying with with LSU, how much different they are. But you also have to understand how much different Vanderbilt is. And and in the emergence of, you can talk about the emergence of Jalen Cook the same way you can talk about the emergence of uh, Rivera Torres. So like both teams have, uh, I, I don't want to call you know call it an analytical footprint or whatever that doesn't really represent exactly what they're they're playing like right now. Uh, the thing is, though, I thought this has nothing to do with stats or anything. But I just I thought it was interesting, and I thought it might come back to bite them a little bit. We mentioned it's the Jordan Wright revenge game. After that win, he got interviewed uh, last game, and uh, one of the guys at SEC Network asked him, uh, you know, what do you have to say about the culture here at at LSU and, and what? coach McMahon has done mm. and he kind of took a dig at Vandy he's he, he did he really if you watch it he really did he's he kind of took a dig at the culture there that Stackhouse has at Vandy and I guarantee they know I guarantee they know and if there's one thing this Vandy team knows how to do it's outperform whatever that that spread is put at you know so you look on you look on the stats and it's hard to get a read on this game I'll tell you this I think it's two teams that are both playing better than their numbers say, and it's it's a it's two teams that do not like each other, and and, and we're gonna get it we're gonna get a scrap here. Um, if if all of these games have double digit spreads, and I have to pick one that I think might be you know a little bit closer than that double digit spread, I'm picking this game right here. Yeah, I'm I'm with you, Max. That that's kind of how I see it. If if I had to pick a game that that is in single digits, this is the one I would pick. I mean, Vanderbilt with Jason Rivera Torres, which if, if the face looks familiar, he was the guy that was in the the Apple TV thing, Swagger, and he's playing with some right now. Yeah, uh, he got got dropped twenty on Alabama. Uh, Ezra Manion, one of the best players in in the conference, uh, they just haven't been any good, so he hasn't gotten a lot of attention. Tyron Lawrence has been better. Tasso's Comateros can step out and make some threes, but I just watched LSU down the stretch of that game against AM, and I just started thinking, man, how old are these guys that are the, that are the guys that are getting it done for them right now? I mean, Cook and Wright have played a ton of basketball. Not a lot of guards in the Kentucky, in the country with more minutes than those two combined. This one's in Baton Rouge. Um, I think Jordan Wright, like you said, is going to be pumped for this one. I'm taking LSU, but I do think it'll be close. Yeah, I'll pick LSU. I think it's closer. If it's if it's like a double digit spread or something, I would feel really good about Vanderbilt in that spot. Um, but I don't know, man. It's you got the Jordan Wright revenge game. You got the Jerry Stackhouse. For, I mean, I don't know, man. That it, there's a lot of 
this would be an interesting game, like Max said. Um, there's motivation on both sides here. So uh, a lot of it. Um, so I'm, I'm curious to see how this thing plays out. Because if, if Vanderbilt puts it all together, I, I still think they've got the best players on the floor in Manion and Lawrence. Uh, but going up against Jordan Wright and Jalen Cook, yeah, it's, it's going to be a, this. This is a sneaky one. Like this is again, if you just look at it on paper, if you just throw throw out what you've seen from a lot of these teams for most of the season, look at some of the recent results and see how they're playing. A lot more intriguing than we would have thought, you know, a month ago. So, I'll tell you All what. Right. No one's been higher on LSU lately than me. I've been I've been really beating the drum for them. If this game was it was in Nashville, I'm picking Vandy. <laughs> Tell you that much, but yeah. since it's, since it's at LSU, um, and just with the momentum that they have coming off that win, I'm gonna pick them. But I just want it to be known. I think this thing's gonna be a scrap. All right, if you had to pick one upset, there it is. Rapid Andy. fire here, Vandy. Yeah. Vandy. All right, Vandy. I think that's what I would do too. But I'm just gonna say this: Look, we've gotten back in the good graces of Auburn fans, so I don't want to, you know, oh, I don't want to take oh, that boy. away. Oh boy. But, I'm just telling you that I think if you look at that recent history, I, I don't know, but it, it does feel like a tough spot for AM here, just based on how bad they're shooting it. And Auburn's just dominate. Like I said, they're just they're just dominating teams. So yeah, I, I'd go Vandy too, probably. So see, we had on Saturday, we had what I think South Carolina was a slight underdog, maybe a point it was by the computers. That was an upset. Florida was a slight favorite over Kentucky. That was an upset. Missouri was a slight favorite over Georgia. That was an upset. Um, Auburn was favored on the road, so that wasn't. Alabama was a heavy favorite, won by three. Ole Miss a heavy favorite or heavy underdog, got clobbered at Tennessee. And AM was almost a 14 point favorite on the computers and got beat out right by LSU. So that's what four, four underdogs that went out right Saturday. Buckle I mean, up. The difference, the difference yeah. here, though, is these spreads are higher. They um, are. They're going to be higher in all these games. And I just, I would not be stunned to see one. If we get multiple upsets, then Then our predictions the rest of the way are going to be ridiculous. Yeah. So, yeah. I I think one of these teams, though, they'll makes it, makes either wins or makes it super close. It's not going to be four straight blowouts. It's just not. No, I think we're getting an upset somewhere. I I, I really think it's going to happen. I just, I don't know which one it's going to be. So. All right. Well, thank you for watching our previews. We'll be back to preview Wednesday's games. And, of course, we'll wrap these up on Wednesday morning. Best way to catch all that, subscribe to the channel and help us out. And give us a like. That helps us out, too. All right. For Blake Lovell and Max Barr, I'm Chris Lee. This is Southeastern 14 presented by Bet Online.